Now we are going to look at the decidability of the SAT problem. So let's see what is the SAT problem. Before that, let's try to understand the word decidable. A problem is called decidable if there is an algorithm to solve the problem. And there are problems for which there is no algorithm, so therefore it's, it's a relevant definition that if I give you a problem, is it decidable or not? Now the question is which problem are we talking about? We are talking about the SAT problem which is stated as follows. Let's suppose I give you formula X in a proposition logic. And the question is, is there a model that satisfies this formula? Or in other words, is F satisfiable? Yes, this problem is decidable. How do we decide this? It's fairly simple to say. Since each of these strings that we can call a formula that belong to P must have a finite number of symbols. And therefore, we can enumerate all possible Boolean assignments to these symbols. And therefore, you can, in exponential time, find the satisfying assignment that satisfies the formula. Or if none of them satisfies, then you say the formula is unsatisfiable. The cost is clearly exponential. However, one thing to note is that we do not know that we can do better. And that's somehow related to this idea of P is equal to NP. And let's not get in there, but please be aware that we do not know that we can do better or we cannot do better. However, there are several tricks that have made the satisfiability checking practical for the real world formula. So there are certain tools, algorithms, methods which solve this sad problem rather remarkably well in a particular subclasses of this satisfiability problem. Since we have this algorithm to uh, do the satisfiability check, then this algorithm what it does, it just enumerates all possible satisfying assignments. So why don't we write them as a table and check it? So truth, that's called truth tables and the uh, truth table is, is the classic way, the quintessential way to, to check satisfiability and one of the first ways mathematicians thought of checking satisfiability. So let's go over the truth tables, which are ground truth means if truth table says that something is sad, then it is sad, otherwise it's not. So let's establish what truth tables are and how do we handle them. The method is usually presented in slightly different notation. We need to assign a truth value to every formula. So far, when we, we, we have been assigning truth value to the variables and then this building the satisfaction relation. What we can do, we can extend this, this assignment with, uh, out to each, var each variable to each formula. So let's see how does it work. Okay. So let's suppose I give you model M. Okay. It maps every variable to a Boolean value. We can extend this to assigning every uh, formula get a Boolean value. How do we do that? Uh, that if uh, a formula is satisfied, by that model m then you basically say m of f is 1 otherwise 0 it's just simple extension okay? which, which we call truth function it's, it's just yet another notation since truth functions are natural extension of models we did not introduce new symbols and can just simply continue using m so what we can do here is using truth functions you can basically uh, write them as a table. Okay, so for example, here you can see that if m of f, uh, how do you know that? If you if you know zero and one is the value of the model on f, then uh, not of f value is one and zero. Okay. Similarly, we can write also conjunction, disjunction, XOR, implication, and equals. Okay, so we can write we take two parameters okay it's a binary symbols and you write all four combination of values and then you see that in you know, each of these combinations what will be the outcome for example let's look at here you have zero and one coming in which are different values therefore the XOR says this is a good choice then I should return one and therefore outcome is one so 
if let's suppose I give you a complex formula like this, how am I going to evaluate that if it is sad or not? So I, this is going to be in, right like this. So all the variables are three here. You just write them down like this and put, uh, let's suppose there are three variables, then to the power three rows needs to be written down and you write down the all combinations. Okay, then what do you do? You copy these columns in the position of P1, P2, wherever these variables are happening. Now you have, uh, you apply the whatever operator you can apply and there's supposed to be a conjunction here and then we compute this column and we got this column. Now we, this is P2, we need to take a negation so then you get this column here and then you get all the signs flipped here. Now you have to compute this symbol, this column. So how do I do this? This is basically taking equivalence of this column and this column. Okay, so whenever they are equal, for example, uh, here they are equal, and then it should be get one. Here they are equal, this one. There's a difference. You get zero, and they're different. Then you get zero here. They are same. It's one. They are same one and zero zero. And then if you, you let's check, yeah, that's what you get out. Now our contenders are this column and this column to build the column for this guy. Again, whenever this guy is 0, clearly this guy is 1. Okay? When this guy is 1, it obligates this guy to be 1. So let's see. And this is a column. You get sometimes 1, sometimes 0. Therefore, now you know this formula is set because in this leading connective column, there are 1s. However, there are few zeros also. So therefore, this formula is the not valid formula and therefore you can evaluate the formula etc. Now, let's establish few equivalences which are well known and uh, it's good we go and use the basic uh, uh, ideas and first principles and establish the, the, those ideas uh, for ourselves. For example, this De Morgan law. It says that if P or Q is equivalent to not of not P and not Q. Basically, you can push this negation inside, then you get this formula. So let's try to prove how this is going to prove. The proof proof is just draw the truth table for both the formulas and see if their columns match. So here P or Q gives you uh, this column. This is simple application of this junction. For here, you need to first negate P, then negate Q, then take conjunction, and then uh, take the negation of that formula. Okay, so you just need to P and Q first, then you take the negation, then we apply the conjunction, we got 1, 0, 0, 0, and then we negate it, we get 0, 1, 1, 1. This convinces us okay, that De Morgan law is true law, and that is the proof. Now we can go on all the natural uh, uh, the equivalences you have seen about the Boolean algebra in your past or in, in digital logic design courses. You can prove them using truth table. Here is another one which is you typically call definition of implication, which means that P implies Q is equivalent to not P or Q. Okay, so again, we can use the definition of P implies Q, which is 1101. Now we can see that how are we going to uh, compute this guy. So we get P and Q here, and then we negate here. So let's see, move on, and then we just take a disjunction between this guy, this guy, and we get 1101, and which my blue and green columns match. So therefore, this equivalence holds. So, truth table is a means to establish uh, satisfiability, equivalences, whatever kind of question you may ask about satisfy, over satisfaction relation. The important thing is that it, it's always you end up writing to the power n rows. There are tricks where you don't have to write all the columns all the time, but still you're always handling to the power n rows. And this is, it's 
seems to be wasteful in some situations. For example, this formula is sat very easily. As soon as I saw it, I knew it's sat. Why? Because there's no negation symbol. Only conjunction and disjunction. Just if there's no negation symbol, then definitely there's an assignment which satisfies it. It's a set out of the one. So I don't need to really go and check all possible choices. Just by looking at the formula, I can tell its satisfiability. Why don't we just have such traits of label 2x before drawing this tedious truth thing? Here's another problem, huh? which as soon as I look at it, I can see it's unsatisfiable. I don't need to draw the truth table. Why? Because you can see that this formula and this formula are the same. So therefore, we are taking conjunction of the formula and its negation, which cannot be satisfied in any way. So therefore, this formula is unsatisfied. So whatever method we use should be able to look at this quick shortcuts very quickly. If they are there, it should use them. And they don't do and immediately start drawing the last truth table. So truth table has this, this drawback. It doesn't really able to exploit the immediately available structured formula sometimes. Now sometimes you may not have it. You end up drawing the full truth table. But if they are there, please take the shortcut.